This is Three Minute Math with Mr. White. In this lesson, we're going to solve quadratic equations, but we're going to do it using the method of completing the square. We're going to use a square root by first creating a perfect square, so let's get right to it. First, let's review what it means to have a perfect square binomial. For example, x plus 5, the quantity squared, that would be considered a perfect square, and if we FOIL it out, we would actually have x plus 5 times itself, which is x squared plus 10x, because 5x and 5x, plus 5 times 5 is 25. Now I want to point out we have two of those 5x's, that's how we got the 10, and we have 5 squared, that's how you get the 25. Okay, so let's go back to this equation. We're going to create a perfect square out of x squared plus 6x equals 7. And the first thing you want to do is make a little space. And you'll see why here in a second. And then you want to set yourself up. We want the left side to be a perfect square. So again, leave a little space because we're going to put a number there. Now, here's the only thing you need to memorize. You need to take that middle term, which is a 6, and you need to divide it in half. And that's the number that's going to go right in that bottom parenthesis there. So now we have the quantity x plus 3, that quantity squared. Now let's go back up top and fill in that blue space. What would need to go in that space since we just put basically a 3 squared on line 2? Well that would be a 9. A 9 would have to go on in that blank up top. Now whatever you do to one side, of course you have to do the other. So I put another positive 9 on the right side of the equation. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify the right side. 7 plus 9, of course, is 16. Now I'd like to clear off the screen a little bit so we can focus on the equation x plus 3. That quantity squared is 16. So we want to get rid of that square because the x that we need to solve for is buried inside that parenthesis. So how do you undo a square? Well, the square root. So we're going to actually use a square root. But here's the cool thing is we're going to use a square root on both sides of the equation. We're going to hit both sides with the square root, and what happens is it cancels the square on the left, and we end up with a 4 on the right. But wait, there's something we need to keep track of. When, whenever you take a square root in an equation, you have to keep track of two things. You're going to have to keep track of both a positive and a minus on the right side, because after all, negative 4 times negative 4 is also positive 16. So in a way, we're keeping track of that possibility. Now from here, we solve the equation normally. We're going to minus 3 on both sides, and then we get our answer x equals. Okay, now this is where the plus and minus comes in. We're going to liter literally branch into two answers. Positive 4 minus 3, and that gives us 1. And the other option comes from that plus or minus. The other option is negative 4 minus 3, and that gives us our second answer, which is negative 7. Okay, let's move on to another example that has a little bit more complexity in it. I'm going to go quicker once we get through the first part here. So take a look at this. 2x squared plus 8x minus 10 equals 0. What's different here is there's a number in front of the x squared and everything is over on the left side. Now we could maybe use the factoring method, but we're going to use the completing the square method. So the first thing you do is get the 10 to the other side. So you add 10 on both sides, get it out of there so that you can make that space that I talked about on the previous example. Now we're going to deal with that too. We really want that to be a 1. So we're going to literally divide everything by that number. So we're going to divide everything by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So now we have the equation x squared plus 4x equals 5. And notice how I left a little space there. I'm going to go ahead and move it up top so we can focus on that equation. Now we want to create a perfect square, so I've set myself up with that, with my blanks and everything. So I take that number 4, remember, that middle term, and I divide it in half, and that's the number that goes inside the parenthesis. Now is the, the part that maybe confuses some folks. We just introduced a 2 on line 2, but that's really a 2 squared on the previous line. So I'm going to put a 4 up top, and whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I'm putting a 4 on both sides, which means I really have a 9 on the right side. Now to get rid of the square so that we can get at the x, we have to do a square root, but we do it on both sides. So I hit both sides with the square root. Now I'd have just plain old x plus 2 equals, and I got plus and minus 3. I have to keep track of the plus and minus. I minus 2 on both sides. So I see my two answers are x equals positive 3 minus 2 is 1. And then my second answer would be negative 3 minus 2, which is negative 5. 
So this has been a primer on completing the square when solving quadratic equations. Um, it gets a little more difficult when you have an A in front of that X squared, but all you need to do is divide it off of there. Make sure you move that C to the other side and make some space and you'll be fine. Okay, good luck. This has been 3-Minute Math with Mr. White.